Okay, this is the second part of lecture two. So this is going to be CS 4510, 2-2. Uh, I have one thing to prove to you today, and that's called the Myhill uh, Neurode uh, Theorem. Uh, pumping is not a perfect characterization of the regular languages, right? So um, we've been using the fact that L uh, can't be pumped implies uh, that uh, L is uh, not regular. But you cannot use this to show something is regular. So L can uh, be pumped does not imply that uh, L is regular. For most languages you can come up with that you think of, actually this probably would follow, but there are some very nuanced uh, uh, counterexamples. And I think one of the homework problems we're planning on doing is to have you come up with one and try and prove it using this theorem. That, that it can be pumped and it is not regular. Right, so to contradict this second statement. So uh, the idea here is if the idea, right? If x comma y are at the same state, then so is uh, X, C, and Y, Z uh, for all Z, right? It should follow internally with 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 your view of what the DFA looks like, right? If as Z is just one symbol, then uh, you know you're going to take that one transition from the same state, and there's only one outgoing transition, so you take it because this is DFA. So now I'm going to define this uh, equivalence relation. So I say, uh, let tilde of L uh, be the equivalence relation uh, such that, I'm going to write it like this, uh, X is in L. Oh, excuse me. Let's say for all Z in uh, Sigma star, XZ is an L if and only if uh, YZ is an L or, and these are equivalent, but I, I prefer to write it this way as well just to make things uh, clear later on. Both uh, XZ is not an L uh, if and only if uh, YZ is not an L. So appending Z will either keep uh, XZ and YZ both in L or both not in L, right? So if we take, you know, so we say if uh, we take Z equals the empty string, then both uh, X and uh, Y are in L or both uh, not in L. Now, here's the here's the here's the theorem we want to prove. Uh, L is a regular if and only if tilde of L partitions. Uh, sigma star into uh, finite number of equivalence classes. So it's not obvious that it's an equivalence relation, but uh, just take one minute 
do it as a quick ex exercise. Symmetric, transitive, uh, reflexive. It, it actually ends up being quite easy if you just take one second to think about it, but off the immediate cusp, it's not, right? But it, it is true. It is an equivalence relation. So let's prove, let's prove it now. So suppose L is regular. Then there exists a DFA, a D, I'll just say exists a DFA D, uh, and then say, suppose the states of the, of the DFA uh, are Q0, QK. Let uh, Q I bracket be the B and equivalence class. Uh, so the first thing to notice is that, uh, because they're equivalence classes, well, I haven't, I've just called them equivalent classes. I haven't proved these are equivalence classes, but first of all, they're all disjoint. So they're pairwise disjoint. Right? So what that means is QI intersect uh, QJ uh, is equal to the empty string. Just to let me let me be clear. QI is a state. The equivalence class bracket QI is the set of strings which land, which end on QI. Right? So QI intersect QJ is a set of strings a set of strings that end on QI and end on QJ. Which you can't end on two states at once in a DFA. It's impossible. So we say that's the empty string. Uh, excuse me, we say that's the empty set. They're pairwise disjoint. And Every string, you can run a DFA on any string, you know. Every sting, string will end on some state of the DFA. So, um, we say that the, uh, the pairwise disjoint, and I'm not sure what to call it, but we'll, we, we, it should be clear that uh, sigma star is equal to the union of i equals 0 to k of the equivalence class. QI. So they partition. Uh, they they're, they're by definition equivalence classes because they're they partition the whole space into uh, disjoint sets. So by definition they are equivalence classes, right? And there's a finite number of them. So so there are so so then each all right each. QI is an equivalence class and there is a finite number of them. Okay. Now let's do the reverse. Let uh, tilde of L partition uh, sigma star into a uh, finite into into not each class is finite, but into a finite number of, cl of classes. Um, then we have to make a DFA. So I'll say we construct a DFA for L. And we do that in order, right? Q 
uh, make uh, one. Oh, excuse me. Start. We'll start from the beginning. Sigma is, you know, alphabet of L. Q. One state per equivalence class. It doesn't matter what you call them. Let's just suppose we call them a Q0 to QK. Q0 is equal to the class uh, containing the empty string. Uh, delta if uh, so for all a in the alphabet and for uh, some let's say so for some x in let's say the equivalence class is qi define uh, delta of q i comma a to be be the state representing the class uh, state of class representing Oh, all right. Instead of representing, so I have class, which, with, uh, I'll say this way: state of class. Let's call it QJ, uh, such that uh, XA is an element of uh, the, the the class uh, QJ. Right, so you basically you take one element of each class and then you say well I'm going to just append it and then just do some checking and then it's in the next class or which and that's enough for you to get the whole topology of the network you get all this the transition out that way and then finally uh, for each class determine if uh, one member of it is in L. That's enough. If one member of the class is in L, then the whole thing is in L. The whole class is in L, right? By this construction. So this is a DFA. It's well defined. You know, you can imagine that uh, this is how you would build the DFA from the equivalence classes and the equivalence classes from the DFA. So. Uh, the point of this theorem is not the proof. The point of the theorem is using it. This theorem is incredibly powerful. It makes some proofs of non-regularity very easy. So I'm going to give you some examples uh, right now. Okay, I will go ahead and say that uh, this theorem is a little cursed in its teaching because uh, the semesters we have taught my whole narrowed and then uh, we comes to an exam and, and we have a question like prove this language is not regular. Students always who students use my whole narrowed almost always use it incorrectly and then they all get like a zero on the question. So uh, if you want to prove something is regular. You have a lot of tools. You have DFAs, NFAs, even GNFAs, regular expressions, you know, things like that. That's all fine. If you you can use this to prove something is regular, but I would prefer you don't because it's actually the proof is actually harder, in my opinion, to prove something is regular using this. It does make sometimes proving things non-regular to be a little easier. But first, I didn't define uh, something, so let me define uh, a distinguishing extension. Distinguishing extension. So 
So we say let uh, x comma y, excuse me, x comma y, both be an L or both uh, not an L. We say uh, z is uh, that if xz is an L and uh, yz is not an L. So basically, it breaks the the it breaks them up. So one you you go into that bucket and then you go into the back in that bucket. You guys aren't friends anymore, right? You guys have to split up. So to prove non-regular, uh, make infinite set. S and find a uh, distinguishing extension uh, for all pairs in S. It has to be an infinite set for this, uh, because if I find a distinguishing extension uh, for two strings, then maybe they were at different states to begin with, right? So. I'm going to do, I don't need any more room, actually. This is how easy the proof is for these things. Let's say 0 to the n, 1 to the n is not regular. Let S be the set uh, 0 to the i, right? i is an integer, any integer. Then, uh, uh, four pair uh, zero to the i uh, zero to the j uh, one to the i is a uh, distinguishing extension uh, since zero to the i one to the i is an L and zero to the i one, to, excuse me, uh, is zero to the j, one to the i, is not an L. Does this make sense? So basically, for I have an infinite set of strings, and I show that we have an infinite set of uh, distinguishing extensions. Right? It has to be infinite because if you imagine, I chose instead of an infinite set, suppose I just chose zero and zero zero. And then I said my distinguishing extension was 1, 1. So I would say, okay, 0, 0, 1, 1 is an L, but 0, 1 is not an L. But that's totally okay in the DFA that 1, 1 puts 0, 0 to the end state and does not put 0 to the end state because then 0 and 0, 1 could be in different states. But if I do an infinite family like this, then the theorem just makes it click. Right. This is an easy one, I think. Uh, problem selection is a, is a real issue. Even though the proof looks shorter, there's a little more moving parts. And if I say prove this language is not regular, it might be worth considering using the pumping lemma before using this. The pumping lemma might be longer, but its logic should be more clear. Okay, this is all I have for today. This was just a, a quick addendum. Um, okay, thanks.